most part, we can handle the cold. It's Minnesota. We're tough. But throw the wind in there. That's a game changer. Whips, bites, stings. I didn't really think I was going to go outside today, did you? Instead, we're going to answer Ashley for my Santee. How do you calculate wind chill? So for this answer, we brought in a non-believer and a believer. I prefer wind scientist. <laughs> I prefer skeptic. Let's start with Matt, the scientist first. What is wind chill? So wind chill is the evaporation of moisture away from your skin. And when wind comes by, it speeds up that evaporation process, which helps cool the body down. So the stronger the wind, the higher the evaporation process, the colder you feel. Now Nate, the skeptic. They can't really tell you that per person that it's gonna feel that way to you. When you talk about somebody who rides a bike or runs outside versus someone standing on a street corner, and I believe that it's more hype. Just like the heat index. Ah, 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 Just like ah. the heat index. Back to Matt. I think what you're talking about is less a feeling and more perspective. But when it comes down to it, wind chill is simple math. Simple math? This it does is not look like simple <laughs> math to me. Here's Matt's calculations using wind and temperature. Here's the formula if you want it. And there's even a chart that includes how many minutes it would take to get frostbite. And you're not coming in every morning doing these calculations. I'd have no time to put on makeup. OK, so Nate, did we change your mind? No. Never in Minnesota is the wind ever constantly blowing. So it's it true. It does vary from minute to minute. And Nate's absolutely right. However, a man that wears shorts year round isn't really paying attention to calls for danger anyway. No, uh, no. He's got a point there. But <laughs> yet, yet I've never had frostbite. 